Hi there, my name is Gwen McHale. I'm a somatic therapist and educator based in the West of Ireland. One of my areas of expertise is trauma and um, recovery from trauma. And I wanted to talk to you today a little bit about one of the less well-known trauma responses, which is sometimes called the fawn response. It's a, um, also referred to as the tend and befriend response or the people please response. It's an area that I think is really important for us to investigate um, because it is so commonplace and unknown. And when we have a, a word for something, it allows us to form a new relationship to it. When we have a conceptual understanding of what's going on, we can engage in our process in a different way. Uh, so that's my motivation in offering you this little video today. So all trauma is really about fear and feeling that something is happening that is overwhelming me, something that I can't respond to um, in a really authentic way or in a way that um, I might consciously choose to do. So when that happens, I have options, right? You've probably heard of the, the fight, flight and freeze, the three Fs. And it was a guy called Pete Walker who, who discovered the fourth F, which is this fawn. So a big thank you to Pete for that wonderful piece of research. Um, so basically, when we fawn, when we go into a fawn response, we're trying to appease the other. We're trying to um, give them what they want. We're trying to be really friendly and non-threatening uh, in an attempt to stay safe. So if you imagine, um, you know, somebody's attacking me, one option I might have would be to try to, to disarm them by being, you know, just so nice and so charming, um, smiling, because if I show aggression back, maybe they're going to get worse. Um, so it's a, it's a survival mechanism. Um, you know, that, that has some level of success at times. It's very adaptive. And I find it, um, you know, any of us can uh, use the phone response at times. But I think in our culture, uh, the way we've been gendered and their conditioning around what it is to be male and female, it's a response that in particular, um, women seem to really know in themselves. And it makes sense that if we're disempowered and uh, we don't have the option uh, of aggression you know culturally women aren't allowed to get angry or be aggressive or be violent uh, if we don't have that option then we might be much more likely to fall and you know, it's culturally acceptable for women to be nice and compassionate and empathetic and understanding so we might try to really use those skills to appease a tense situation which is fine until it becomes an unconscious habit that every time I'm triggered, I'm like, yeah, 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 absolutely, of course, I'd be happy to do that for you, no problem at all. Even though my authentic response might be like, oh my God, no, how could you even ask me that, you know? So it's that place of loss of, of identity, loss of authenticity, a place where I'm too scared to show who I truly am or what I truly think or what I truly believe. Um, and where it becomes almost impossible to set really clear boundaries. Because even if I can manage to say no, which would be an achievement if I was really stuck in a phone place, you know, I'll be saying it's like, yeah, no, I'm so sorry, but I really can't do that today. And the person isn't getting the message of a no, they're getting the message of yes, because my body language, my facial expressions is communicating a yes. So what we end up with is very blurry, very confused relationships. Um, which are very dissatisfying for both people because there isn't a real uh, intimacy possible in those kinds of relationships. There isn't a place where I can really be seen by the other, where I can risk showing myself to the other and have them see me. Um, and I'm defending against something in the other. So there's a projection involved. You know, I'm thinking the other person's threatening, even if they may not be. So really very, very unsatisfying relationships result. 
Okay, so that's a little bit about phone. I'm going to make a few videos on this topic because it's close to my heart and I feel that once we start to, to work with repair and repatterning of this particular trauma response, it can really lead to much more fulfilling lives, lives where you know, we can really express ourselves in the world and really be ourselves and form more intimate relationships and connections with other people. So yeah, I hope you've enjoyed this little introduction to the topic of phoning. Uh, there will be more in the, the coming days and weeks. Okay, thank you for your attention and I wish you a great day. Bye for now.